My name is Rodney Mullen, and I'm just a skateboarder. Now, Rodney, what has been your involvement with the Tony Hawk franchise? Oh, wow. Tony asked me to be involved on the second one. And so I give advice. I obviously do voiceovers and video parts, but I give a lot of advice in some places more than others. Playing a game like this, where you can sort of do things that are superhuman, does it give you ideas and help you create tricks? Absolutely. That's right. It does, because... I understand what you say, it's okay, it's not realistic on one side, but on the other, that's what your sort of creative process, um, it fuels it, because you're always, what if, because that's the nature of, I mean, three years from now, I would hope to be able to do things I thought were impossible presently, and so that's what the game provides us, it's, it's sort of this dream-like state, that you can do what you think and see what combinations or motions work together. There's some wild ideas there for sure. You just gotta, you gotta. There's always the boundaries for sure. I mean, the games are pretty insane these days, and kids at demos and stuff are like, "Hey, do a 900." I'm like, "Dude, it's too early in the morning right now. Can't do that." As a pro skater, I learn from 411s from random kids all the time. And I'll gladly say it because there'll be something natural about a way he holds his body or folds his foot or the combination of things. Everyone is different. Everyone is different. So the point is, is I watch videos all the time to learn. That's the point for me. And I would love to see the Tony Hawk games develop to the point where you could truly learn from foot placement and watch roll of the ankle and all the joints move because your body is a long chain. It's all connected. And I don't see anything close to that, um, to the level that can truly teach me. And that's what I want to see. Now, one thing I feel like the Tony Hawk franchise hasn't done for me over time is really replicate the, the feeling of accomplishment you get when you nail a, a trick. Why do you think that games have sort of failed to capture that feeling of, of really what it is to be a real skateboarder? Arto and I were just talking about it. You think, what percentage of the real tricks that give you satisfaction, of switch flips or 360 flips, of the real tricks where you feel that satisfaction? And these are things you make one out of 500 times. And so I'm sure the game guys could come up with stuff that is that hard. But I don't think anyone would buy the game if it were that hard. You see what I'm saying? So I think by the nature of a game that you want to play and enjoy, it's not going to give you satisfaction because I think it's inherent in us is the higher price you pay for something, the more you feel better if you make it, you know? There are tricks that were in the first couple Tony Hawk Pro Skater games that when I first saw them, I was like, people will never do that. And now people are doing it. So do you think, you know, maybe... It does inspire skaters to go out and maybe try the impossible and, and do it. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's, there's things, I mean, day one still probably beats the whole game in real life. and skating, and so does Rodney. So it's like all the tech stuff and all that. How long do you think you'll be skating? Oh, wow. Uh, I never thought it would last this long, and... and, and I often, like, I talk with Tony Hawk, we were talking about getting injured, and you, you think, oh, I broke this bone, that's a sign, I should quit. And in the end, like, um, I thought I should quit when I can no longer maintain the highest level. And indeed, I may do that in the public eye, because I don't want to be the old guy that people feel sorry for. You know, holding on to the dream that's not really just a nightmare. <laughs> and I hope to be that crazy old 60-year-old, at least just cruising, you know? cruising with my dog on the strand or something because I'll get that same joy at that age, I think. I hope.